Hello everyone, welcome back to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we are gonna be doing a fun video where we compare different types of filter circuits, and specifically, we're going to be looking at how effective, really, is a ferrite when used as a filter. Now, some applications of ferrite beads have been placed as a filtering element with the intention of removing high-frequency noise, but I think you should ask yourself, does it really work that way, and how effective is it? We're gonna break it down in some spy simulations in Altium Designer, so make sure to hop into your copy of Altium Designer and follow along. Let's get started. If you've watched any of the videos that we've done on ferrites and you've watched any of the one minute design reviews, you've probably seen a lot about ferrite usage. And one of the most common places I see ferrite usage in a PCB is on the PDN with the intent to act as a filter. Now, I'm not gonna get into this whole business of how ferrites modify the impedance of a PDN and how that creates additional noise when you're actually trying to remove noise. If you wanna learn about that, check out the video links in the description. You can learn all about the effects of ferrites in a PDN, specifically for supporting digital components. In this video, what I want to do is to look at really the effectiveness of a ferrite as a filter generally. Suppose you wanted to filter DC power going to a DC load and you decide to use a ferrite bead. Is it really the best option or should you use some other type of filter? That's the question we're going to look at today and we're gonna do that by comparing with some other filter options. We're gonna compare with a pi filter with inductors and capacitors and then we're going to compare with an RC filter. So let's jump into Altium Designer, take a look at some simulation models and then we'll see what we can find out. So here I am inside of Altium Designer. You can see here on screen that I've constructed three different filters and they're all targeting low pass filter behavior with a 10 megahertz cutoff frequency. So here up in the top, we have a Pi filter. Here we have a ferrite bead Pi filter, basically where the inductor has just been replaced with a ferrite bead. And then down here we have an RC filter. Now, the other thing that these filters are trying to do is they're basically trying to target approximately the same impedance if you were to just look at the characteristic impedance of this Pi filter or this fer ferrite bead filter. This RC filter is just a first order filter because we only have one reactive element. And then I think as you would expect, the Pi filter is going to be a second order filter because we have these two reactive elements that work together. And then the ferrite bead, I think at this point, if you don't already know the answer, is going to be a big question mark. So we don't really know what's the roll off, we don't really know what happens above resonance and what the noise filtering characteristic is really gonna look like. Now that we have this all set up, what we wanna do is look at an AC sweep. And here in this AC sweep, I've set the end frequency pretty high and I've set the start frequency pretty low. And the reason I've gone so low on the start frequency is pretty simple. I wanna to check to see how well these different filters behave when they are trying to filter noise off of a DC input. Now, the reason I bring that up is because ferrite beads are really only appropriate for filtering when you're dealing with very low frequencies or DC frequencies. So that's why we've placed the ferrite bead in this type of configuration and then comparing with all of these other filter options. Now, 10 megahertz cutoff might seem like a little high when you're targeting DC filtering. However, I bring that up because 10 megahertz is a typical resonant frequency for a ferrite bead. Ferrite beads can have resonant frequencies ranging from low megahertz all the way up to high megahertz and anywhere in between. They can also have various bandwidths, and the bandwidth of this particular ferrite bead filter has been set to plus or minus five megahertz, so pretty wide bandwidth. So now that we have this all set up, we can go ahead and run our AC sweep. Now here we have our results and we can see what the characteristics of these filters are when we're approaching open circuit conditions. So if we just jump back to the schematic here, you can see that the load in each of these three circuits is a 1000 K ohm resistor, basically a one mega ohm approximating something like an open circuit. Now we can see a few things here. First, we have the RC filter. It looks just like RC filter behavior that we would expect. Here, if we look at the LC filter, the LC filter we can see has a very sizable peak in it. And that peak causes gain of about a factor 4.5. So that's some pretty good gain right there, even though we have this broad bandwidth. And then we have the result for the ferrite. Now, if we just zoom in here, what do we see? 
Well, we see a couple of things initially in the open circuit condition. Here we can see that near its resonance, the ferrite does have some gain, just as we would expect. Now the gain, of course, is not the same amount of gain that we see with the LC filter because, of course, if we look back here in the ferrite, we see that the ferrite does have some non-zero resistance in this parallel LC filter model. So because of that, it actually limits the amount of gain that you would expect to see at the resonant frequency. And here it's only about a factor of 1.2. Compare that to a factor of 4.5 for the LC filter. Then we can also see the roll off here. The roll off is a little bit steeper than what we have for the RC filter. Again, I think that's exactly what we'd expect given the fact that we have both inductor and capacitor behavior in different frequency ranges. Next, if we just take a look at the logarithmic scale, we can start to see here really what the roll off is. And this is where you really start to see the different effectiveness of the filters arise up at high frequencies. First, let's take a look at the RC filter. Here you can see very clearly the RC filter exhibits first order roll off behavior exactly as you would expect. Here with the LC filter, it does exhibit this peak, which you can see very clearly in the logarithmic plot. However, you can also see here that it also exhibits second order roll off behavior, again, exactly as you would expect. What about the ferrite? Well, here with the ferrite, you can see that it looks like it exhibits a little bit of higher order roll off behavior, but eventually it just flattens out and it stops rolling off up at high frequencies. So initially when we're in open circuit condition, doesn't really look like the ferrite is such a good filter, does it? I think if you want to build a filter that takes advantage of inductance to provide filtering, you should just use an inductor instead of trying to use a ferrite in place of an inductor. Now, before we move on and look at the case where we have a smaller load and we're drawing more current through these filters, let's just briefly look at the case of this LC filter. You'll notice here, again, we have this peak here due to the LC filter resonance, and we have a gain of about 4.5. What can we do in the LC filter to try and reduce this and then make this filter a little more suitable for an application with filtering at DC? Well, one thing that you can do, and I've shown this in other videos, is to intentionally add some resistance here for these different components that make up this filter. Now, Normally SMD capacitors and inductors will have some effective series resistance, but it's not always enough effective series resistance to dampen that peak and then eliminate it from the transfer function. So here what I've done is I've intentionally added some resistance here. And if we just run the AC sweep again, you can see here that if we're coming off of net R3, we get some very nice roll off, we get that low pass behavior, and we have a very nicely damped peak for that LC filter. So that's one way to deal with the LC filter to then remove that peak from the transfer function. So now that we've modified the LC filter, let's do another comparison. Let's take a look at these three filter options and let's change the load to a lower value so that we're now drawing in more current into these filters. And let's see how a lower load changes the transfer function for these filters. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our damped pi filter and we're gonna take our ferrite bead pi filter and our RC filter. And now we're going to apply these to a load of 100 ohms. So if we're dealing with a DC application at five volts, as you can see here in the schematic, ostensibly we would essentially be trying to draw 50 milliamps of current. Now, if I run this AC sweep, you can see here what's starting to happen if we just zoom in on this ferrite peak. So right here where my cursor is, you can see that the peak has started to drop a little bit. That might be a little counterintuitive, but actually as this load resistance on the ferrite bead filter starts to reduce, you then get more current moving into the load and bypassing capacitor C6. Now, the other transfer functions, they basically look unaffected. But here with the ferrite transfer function, you can start to see what happens as we start to lower the load resistance. What happens if I go to an even lower load resistance? Let's say instead of 100 ohms here, I have a resistance of, let's say, 5 ohms. So now we're powering with, let's say, 5 volts DC, and we want to draw 1 amp into this circuit. So let's go ahead and run this. So here are the results from the AC sweep. Again, we get a little bit of deviation in the LC filter. Um, the LC filter can be seen right here in the pi filter, and this is coming off of R3. So that's going to be this red curve right here. Again, we get a little bit of deviation due to the lower resistance. Here on the capacitive filter, we also get some deviation. But what do we see here with the ferrite? 
Well, with the ferrite, we see that we get big dropout right here at resonance and we get really low voltage. But then we restore that output voltage up to about 0.67 volts at much higher frequencies. So this really illustrates something important with the ferrite bead as a filtering element. The capacitive nature of the ferrite bead eventually takes over and starts allowing higher frequency noise into your circuit. This could be a really bad thing, and I think it underscores why you should just use, for example, an LC circuit or an RC circuit, and if you need that higher roll-off, preferably you would just use an LC circuit because it's going to function as an actual inductor up to much higher frequencies than a ferrite bead. Now, clearly, this ferrite bead is really not very effective as a filter once you get above a certain frequency range. Why do people keep wanting to use it as a filter? I'm really not sure where this comes from. I think it comes from a combination of old application notes advocating the use of ferrite beads as a filtering element, especially for EMI. I think it also comes from development kits. Some development boards on PMICs that might include a ferrite bead as a filtering element on the output have a DC load. So again, if you're just powering up a DC load with a DC supply and you have no other sources of noise in the system, I think you don't really need to worry about what happens beyond the ferrite bead resonance. In a real situation where there could be EMI, there could be other noise sources in your system, there could be other circuits that induce noise in your circuit, you then may have to worry about those frequencies above resonance. And in that case, the ferrite bead stops working so well. Instead, you should just pick the damped LC circuit and you should very carefully design that damping to ensure that you don't get that resonant peak right at the cutoff frequency, or you should just use the RC circuit as I've shown here. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. The next time somebody tries to use a ferrite bead as a filter in a digital circuit, you are now armed with the knowledge that you need to tell them why it's a bad idea. Make sure to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, leave your comments and questions in the comment section. And last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks. We'll see you next time.